Facebook, Google. Um, it's amazing. We've got some really cool stuff, 3D stuff, um, lots of jQuery, lots of JavaScript, lots of front end, um, lots of awesome things. Um, so, actually, what's full screen? Anybody? Quickly? Man ship, sir. Ah, cool. Um, so, I'm here to talk about documenting interfaces. I'm actually doing this talk at jQuery TO, but it's going to be a little bit bigger. This is, was only like a 10 minute um, presentation. I have 10 minutes, right? 15? <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, so, is this on? Oh, no. There we go. Okay, I like the big way for stuff. As the Humber College students know that are here, I see you. Uh, you guys can't answer this next question because I asked it at a talk I just did at, their, um, uh, at the college the other day. Um, but I have a free GitHub uh, t-shirt to give away. I think it's a medium. Um, I also have a ton of stickers that everybody can just run up and get. There's like Iron Man, I think. There's like Polar Mobile. There's, a ton. There's Wolverine. Anybody? Oh, <laughs> no. No problem. So, uh, yeah, quick question. I'd like to always give away free stuff because it's, I don't know, it's fun. Um, so, what's the default positioning of an element? Static. Yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> bro. A lot of people know that because um, they're always dealing with relative or absolute positioning. Um, yeah. If you, if you don't want, you can give it away, um, make some friends. Uh, how many people have actually met me before or know who I am? A couple? Okay, sweet. Anybody? So who, who hasn't met me or know who I am? Sweet! <laughs> We're going to become friends. So you guys are all following me, um, <laughs> right? It's at Darcy, just my first name, pretty cool. I got friends on Twitter. Um, so uh, yeah, what is documentation? Um, this is going to be light, again, uh, you have to pay for the big show, uh, but uh, what's documentation? Um, to me, it's uh, about communication, it's uh, about telling a story, um, it's about documenting something that's happened, events. Um, does anybody know what this is? Do you know, Lane? Dead Sea Scrolls? Yeah. Uh, maybe, I don't know, actually. Wrong language. That's, I don't know. Wrong language. Uh, that's what, wrong language? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's cuneiform. It's cuneiform. Have you guys heard of cuneiform? So basically, this is one of the oldest documented uh, sort of languages or uh, documentation. Um, uh, it's about 3,000 years old. It's one of the oldest. I don't, I've tried to find the oldest uh, documents. Um, and I think that there was over 7,000, uh, 7, oh my goodness, 1,000 different uh, pictograms. Uh, in this language, so they literally were documenting everything. Um, if you think about the characters we use to form, uh, formulate the language we do now with, uh, what, how many players in alphabet, 26? Okay, uh, awesome. So we sort of evolved uh, our language and the way that we documented things over time. Um, you can tell we went to scrolls, we were drawing on uh, rocks, and then we had books. And then we had pictures, and then we had cats looking at laptops. <laughs> um, and it, it's gotten so crazy now that we also have cats looking at cats on iPads. Um, so yeah, it's like catception. I bet you're just thinking right now, whoa, <laughs> alien documentation. Who watches the History Channel? No? Anybody? Do you ever watch Ancient Aliens? This guy's amazing. Okay, S small subset. This is an inside joke. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit out there, but uh, I like to think about time a lot, um, the past, the present, and the future. Um, and I will, lately I've been liking to think about modes that I'm in. Um, I think there's two modes that you get in, and one is creation, the other is consumption. Um, so when I'm creating something, I'm not consuming, I'm just generating. And it's kind of like an energy thing. I'm not like super hippie, but like I kind of look at it that way. When I'm creating something, I'm not consuming. When I'm consuming, I'm not creating. So I'm very aware of when I'm in one or the other. <laughs> when you put these two things together, time and these modes, you seem to think that every time as a designer, as a UX developer, you're constantly, when you're creating, thinking about the future, how somebody's going to use your uh, piece of work or how it's going to be perceived. Um, and then when you're consuming, you're looking at something that's already been built, it's in the past, right? Um, so if I'm reading a book or um, reading documentation, um, it was already created, it's sort of in the past. Um, and then if you're in the present, we're always in the present, uh, you're just out to lunch. So, but the future can be dangerous. Uh, 
if you are constantly creating and not looking and reflecting on what you've done, not documenting what you've done, uh, this can become a dangerous cycle. And uh, you know, if you get hit by a bus, the old theory, developers get hit by a bus and the project goes to hell because nobody else knows how to write the code because it's not documented. Um, <coughs> so I want to talk about UI. Doc oh, here we go. It's also very important uh, to document because you know you got to be very. Uh, everybody read that. It's the cutest kid I've ever seen. <laughs> right. It's, this is why documentation is important to tell you why uh, students don't actually sound like airplanes. Um, so there's different types of documentation out there. Um, there's uh, sort of conceptual documentation, which sort of gives you an idea about um, the, the thinking behind something. Um, there's sort of tutorial, step-by-step -step guide to actually implementing something. Um, and then there's reference, where strict reference or implementation um, sort of API guides would be similar to this if you've ever used, um, you know, like a bootstrap or something like that. So there's some really good uh, uh, examples of great documentation out there. Ember.js does a great job. Um, a lot of these are, you'll notice are, are, are del uh, development based or, or programming based. Uh, Bootstrap has amazing documentation. Uh, Foundation, uh, Backbone, <coughs> GitHub. Uh, has anybody seen the GitHub style guide ever? It's really good. Um, but uh, most of these are sort of curated. They're at the uh, curated references. Um, and that, that's something that uh, becomes an issue when you want to sort of have something that's easy to maintain. So um, I want to focus in on references for documenting UI. References or API documentation. Um, so what should documentation be? Uh, it should be concise, descriptive, s should be standard, and there should be easy to maintain. Um, these are going to be the wins that you get with uh, the tools that I'm actually going to show you. Um, right now. Um, oh, in the next couple slides. <laughs> so UI documentation is hard uh, because of a couple of things. Uh, a lot of times it requires context. You don't know whether you're in a mobile or desktop or tablet context. It's very hard to actually generate uh, documentation for that unless it's curated again by hand. Um, it also requires those visual cues. A lot of times good UI documentation, it's great to have um, visual aids, pictures, uh, videos, video tutorials. Um, so this is very hard um, to do. It also requires multiple stakeholders. And why, by, what I mean by that is actually, when you look at UI, you need HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, CSS and JavaScript a lot of the times to, to actually implement um, UX and UI. So I want to talk about generators, because this is something that the programming community has been doing well for a long time. Um, they've come up with ways to parse their code and generate documentation for themselves. Um, so a good one, or a couple of good ones, good examples of this are like UI doc, uh, ext docs, uh, natural docs, that, I think that's for PHP, this PHP docs as well, Tom doc, which is for Ruby, uh, doco, which is for CoffeeScript, um, and they all do one thing really well, it's comment parsing. Um, but in order to have comment parsing, you have to have some sort of standard of comments. Um, so this is what a typical comment block looks in, uh, like uh, in JavaScript. Um, I just use that because it's my best frame of reference. Um, so you can see that it's very descriptive. It tells you what parameters it should take, what it should return. Um, this is sort of a standard that has sort of gone around in a long time. If you're writing good code, you're usually writing great documentation. Um, and if you write this, uh, one of those parsers can pick, pick up all your code and actually be able to uh, generate the documentation for you. So, <coughs> well, what about the UI? That was all sort of program-based, API-based, uh, functional um, uh, documentation. <coughs> and more specifically, what about CSS? Uh, CSS has sort of been the Wild West for a long time. Uh, people have sort of done everything their own way. Um, so what about CSS as far as uh, this goes, as far as documentation? Um, has anybody heard of KSS? Yeah. Yeah? Good. You? Yeah. Oh, sweet man. Hey, you came to the right talk. Um, so KSS was built by a guy named Kyle Neath. He works at GitHub. Really smart guy. Um, I like KSS, but it doesn't get me all the way there. It's a sweet Ruby gem um, that does do some parsing of uh, your CSS or your less or your SAS. So that's kind of cool. Um, this is what his style guide looks like. So if you want the parser to actually work, you have to sort of write your documents 
uh, or write CSS like this, or are your comments like this. Um, this is actually, I think, uh, a less version. So you can see it's doing the backslash with uh, backslash backslash for their comments. Um, and you'll note that he doesn't really have any um, at tags, like parameters or anything, to, to declare uh, the different sort of pieces of the style guide um, compared to that other JavaScript uh, comment block. Um, so that's something I'll get into in a sec. So uh, you can actually go to warspire.com slash KSS to check out an example. Um, the one big problem with KSS right now is that it actually is a multi-step process. Um, it doesn't actually build the documentation in one step. Um, it's important to note that that's kind of like a really hard beginner's learning curve, like if you have to do multiple things um, to actually get a uh, piece of software to work. Um, so <coughs> this is an example of what it outputs. So it looks pretty good. Uh, he's done some, a good job of uh, actually uh, framing it in such a way that you know abides by the sort of GitHub style guide. Um, so there's some pros to this this uh, utility to this tool. KSS dynamically generates an object, um, so it's sort of the tree of information for each uh, comment in each section it creates. Um, it also enforces structured commenting. So if you're working in a team and you have this one document that tells you how you should be commenting, it's great because everybody's on the same page and everybody knows what they should be doing. Um, and this is something that's sort of being enforced in JavaScript for a long time, and everybody in CSS is sort of you know, doing their own thing, which uh, I think we should start to look in and, and take some of those uh, tips from the JavaScript community. Um, <coughs> encourages documentation of states. Um, so CSS, as you know, it's great now for doing uh, different transitions, animations. Um, so there's going to be a lot of different states, different classes that get added to, added to different uh, address that, uh, that, that problem of context. And it also doesn't address the problem in, of inheritance. So styles can get inherited or inherit from their parents' um, uh, styles. So that, that's the cons of KSS. Um, still great. So can we do better? Um, I sort of went back and forth whether or not to uh, showcase this. It's not really a showcase, but uh, you guys will be the first people to see this outside of my company. Um, and I, I'm only going to give you a little bit so that uh, jQuery TO will have most of it. Right? <laughs> Full disclosure, obviously, I'm like, you know, big part of jQuery too. Um, so, long pause. Okay, can we do better? Can we do better? Okay. So this is DSS. Well, KSS was Kyle Neath, or Neath Kyle style sheets, right? Called it after himself. I'm not calling it Darcy style sheets. It's documented style sheets, right? You know. Okay. So I want something that's a little bit more global. I want something a little bit more robust. I want to work with the community here and at large. Um, I'm a big open source proponent. I want to come up with a standard way that we comment our CSS. So this is this is the logo still. We've got some revisions to do. Um, but documented style sheets essentially will be a um, oh, warning into work in progress. It will be a documentation tool. Um, it will be a style guide, similar to what I just showed you. And it will be a comment parser. So it will come with everything that you need uh, to write or create documentation. Um, it's also, oh, that's not what I said. So the pros of actually doing this over KSS, which is the currently only tool I could find out there that currently uh, does CSS uh, um, documentation or generation, is it's a single step build process. So you just run a command, and it gets built. Um, it's flexible. The style guide that uh, I'm proposing is flexible. It can be iterated upon. This is great if you've ever done anything in standards co uh, committees and bodies. Um, it's really important that you, you can actually have some flexibility in a specification. Um, template support, so you can get customization where you want it, um, and it isn't just going to be generic. So you can have a hybrid model of sort of uh, tailored uh, documentation to generated documentation. And then it is a Grunt JS plugin. Does anybody use Grunt? One? You, okay, I'm talking to you after. Um, <laughs> so Grunt JS, uh, it's a like a task uh, tool. So all you would have to do is install Grunt. Uh, and in each one of your projects, you can actually include DSS. And uh, when you go to actually build your uh, project, it will run all that documentation parsing, and it will actually create documentation for you. Um, the cons of DSS, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with this. Um, it still doesn't address the context issue. 
documentation at CSS level is very shallow. Right now, uh, I'm not doing anything that sort of uh, holds context and, and figures out where you are within scope of CSS. And it still doesn't address the inheritance problem that KSS has. But I'm working on it. We are working on it at our company. We're coming up, trying to come up with a way that we can provide this in a tool. Um, so this is the first look at the style guide. Uh, again, you'll notice it looks almost exactly like that JavaScript um, style guide. We've got a name, a description. We've got states, which are similar to KSS. They have states. They just automatically parse it. But this isn't rigid. Um, actually defining the state gives us some flexibility in where these uh, parameters are put, whether or not you include them or not. Um, and if we always maintain, right now the spec, spec says that if there's always a markup at the bottom, you can have uh, HTML examples or code uh, blocks at the end of your comment. So this is great for examples uh, in, the, uh, in the documentation. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, I, I do have a GitHub um, repo right now. If anybody wants to comment on that, make issues, uh, talk to me afterwards. Uh, about what it, about it and what I'm doing with it and uh, the spec, and then so it's Darcy Clark, DSS uh, is the repo right now, and I'm gonna tell you more to be announced at jQuery Two. <laughs> so thank you. If you guys have any questions, uh, uh, do I have time for yep. questions? Gosh. Have you looked at all at addressing the issue of dependency management in uh, tutorial style documentation, especially with large APIs? I find it, it, it's very common for it to go stale and nobody notices. Yeah, so I looked at like a parent uh, a, a declaration. Um, we've left it out right now until I can find a better way of like the inheritance and the context, because you might be able to, the parser might be able to do some of that work. Um, but I did look very uh, closely at adding a parent um, and that would specify like uh, another class or another name of uh, a comment that you or, or a piece of UI that you uh, comment. So um, eventually there will be something like that that will join together, like you say, dependencies or, or, or things that are parented, or parent, parents of child and nesting and all that stuff. So. Cool. Go ahead. For the inheritance thing, you can use um, Chrome or Firefox, the, the computed styles. Yeah. They, they've obviously, when, when they render it, they calculate that. Have you looked at digging into those plugins to figure out how they determine it? Yeah, so the, uh, that would require that we compile all the CSS, um, hold reference to where the comment blocks are, or like the selectors. Um, and then figuring that out. I, it's definitely something I'd be open to. That's probably the only way that we would f figure that out. Um, one of the biggest problems though too is uh, um, the HTML structure. Um, unless, you, like that's probably the biggest one, the biggest hurdle is actually creating examples um, that somehow could be nested in each other. So at our company we actually work on a SDK called Media Everywhere. Um, and we have a ton of sort of views that get nested in each other, and those could change context, whether you're in tablet, because um, they, they're adaptive, we can change sort of what the, that looks like, so. Yeah, it's tough without rendering the whole page. It's tough without rendering the whole app, right? So, and then changing the context and then showing you. So the so we're working on that right now. We're, we're having discussions about it. I feel a modicum of your pain. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so right now, this works great for like shallow uh, CSS. So you have, have a bunch of classes like a bootstrap, Twitter bootstrap. This is perfect for it because uh, a lot of the styles are global, sort of. Um, they aren't uh, nested so much as that, you know, you could put a class on anything and it creates that button or it creates that uh, piece of UI. So that's great for them. Uh, for us, uh, when the context change changes, uh, the UI changes. So that's, it's a little, it's a little harder for us to figure that out right now. But. Anybody else? Question? Go. Any impediments to using a documentation system like this with, say, uh, less or SAS or anything well, anything like uh, CSS or? Not that I know of. Like any issues with that? You I'm just, I'm just curious if you, yeah, if you've tried to find it. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've parsed things with that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean. It's, it's, yeah. No, it's uh, definitely a good question. We. Um, the one thing that I should know that I, uh, you know, it's a good question because uh, you can actually extend um, CSS uh, elements and, and with mixins. 
Um, so that is another sort of uh, context and inheritance um, yeah. issue that we're still trying to uh, figure out, like how we go about you know, grabbing those styles in and uh, creating that, you know, generating that documentation. Cool. Thank you, Darcy. No problem. Sure, you check out Darcy's <laughs> remainder of the talk, jQuery TO. And <laughs> hey, someone here, good for, come on. Someone here, it's that was really good. Thank you. And someone here is going to win a ticket to go there and check it out. <laughs>